Hi, in uh, Revelation chapter 20, starting at verse 12, it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, what I want to talk about is that some people don't believe that hell is eternal. And they'll make the argument that hell isn't eternal because it's cast into the lake of fire. And Look, just because hell's cast into the lake of fire doesn't mean that it's going to, you know, just cease to be, that it's going to stop burning. Okay, the Bible does not say that. Um, And let me show you something Jesus said in Mark. When he describes hell, he says, into the fire that never shall be quenched where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And he says it again about hell, right? Hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Now, some people may think, well, you know, if people... You know, let's go back to Revelation, okay? Because they would say, well, those people got out of hell, so how is it eternal? Right, because Revelation talks about, uh, uh, Revelation 20 talks about how, you know, 2013, how, how death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them, and they were judged according to every man, to, according to the works. That's the, uh, the, the great white throne of judgment where the unsaved are going to be judged according to their works, which ironically, that's what they want, which is insane. But look, when hell gets cast into the lake of fire, hell isn't going to cease to exist, but that's when it's going to be eternal. Because after the judgment seat of Christ, Excuse me, not the judgment seat of Christ. The great white throne of judgment. Okay. After the great white throne of judgment, the unbelievers, after they're judged, they're going to be thrown back into hell, which was thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And they're going to suffer eternal torment. And that fire, according to Jesus, is not going to be quenched, okay? And a reason that, big reason why, why hell is eternal is because if you reject Jesus Christ, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, okay? Hell would have to last forever. It would have to be eternal, Because the only way for your sins to be paid for would be by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And those that haven't done that, they would have a sin debt that would be impossible to pay. Right? And if hell weren't forever, if if people just burned up for a while and then ceased to exist, well, then then you'd basically be saying that You know, after a while, they paid for their sins, which is heresy. Um, And I also know some people are sensitive um, about hell being eternal, right? It's it's a very sombering thought. And um, some people know people, or, or excuse me, knew people in their life 
that died without Christ and they're in hell and they just they don't want to think about somebody that they love that they would be in hell for eternity okay and first of all everybody that is in hell deserves to be there hell is a just place they rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ okay everybody gets chances to hear the gospel and the people in hell just continue to refuse it okay and look if something offends you out of the bible you can't pretend it's not there okay hell clearly lasts forever um and that should motivate you to want to win even more people to Jesus Christ, to preach the gospel even more, um, to tell people about the God that forgives sins and how much God loves us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And um, look, if you're somebody that that thinks you can avoid God in hell, you know, if you're an atheist or something, and you just think that hell's a place where all your friends are, and there's a big party going on down there or something, um. Remember, the smoke of their torment is sent up forever and ever. Okay. It's forever and ever. And, uh, look, people in hell would be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. God is om omni- uh, present he, he's he's everywhere and he's gonna watch you burn um i mean it's what the bible says okay and remember that he doesn't want you to be there and look he's not going to be on fire like burning okay he is not going to be suffering. You're going to be suffering there. And you're still going to be in his presence. For all of eternity. And he'll be just fine. Um, you reject Jesus Christ. You reject God who is good. God who is love. You reject goodness and love and compassion and everything positive in this life you reject. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thine house. Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. He lived a perfect sinless life. He died on the cross for your sins. Not his because he didn't have any. He died for your sins on the cross, for you, so that you don't have to go to hell when you die. He paid for all your sins. Do you accept that, or do you reject that? Jesus Christ died on that cross. He was buried, and on the third day, He rose again. He was bodily resurrected for your justification. He suffered for you because He loves you. And I'll say it again. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. It's Jesus Christ. Whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. There you go.